thinking of school, mm -hmm. and it is back to school, we were very fortunate this summer to work with ConAgra Foods for Hunger Free Summer, which over the summer, so many kids, because they're not in school, are food um, insecure. They're not getting those meals that they would usually get. So the campaign is still going on. I know they've been donating a lot of money and meals to kids in need. So we did a video for ConAgra Foods, and um, we would love to show that now. And coming up, we're gonna learn about how to get your kids ready to go back to school, and then on the weekends, you're gonna need date night now. Absolutely. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> for the past 20 years, ConAgra Foods and the ConAgra Foods Foundation have been pioneers in the fight against child hunger. While we can't feed everyone, we can help feed one more. This summer, simply look for the red push pin on specially marked packages. For each eight-digit code entered at childhungerendsheer.com, ConAgra Foods will donate one meal to Feeding America. Let's start a conversation online and off for a hunger-free summer. We have walked out the hot seat. Uh, <laughs> this is Heather Bragg. Uh, she's in elementary education, and she has also written a fantastic book. Oh, yeah, learning, learning. learning. I'm handing them down. Decoded. Yeah, pass See, them out. Useful. Pass them out for the teacher. Yes. This is um, why we get someone long arms. This is just in time. I mean, back to school. It's it's an anxiety ridden time, and for all the parents out there and here on the on the couch. I guess, where should our mindset be right now as we're prepping? Uh, you know, several things. I think, um, first of all, our kids tend to get kind of nervous going back to school, mm -hmm. but oftentimes it's us that get really nervous. Are we passing it on to them? We might be, we might be. Uh, so before we kind of talk to our child about, um, hey, what are you gonna do, or who's in your class this year? You know, kind of taking a step back and kind of looking at our own anxiety and kind of just checking what's going on in our in our own heads. And then when we talk to our child about starting school, say, you know, hey, how do you feel about school starting this year? And not even bringing anxiety to the table if it doesn't belong there yet. Okay. So I have three kids, and they are all different ages. How do I handle that? Because I feel like I'm three moms in one body. Yeah. And um, getting them to school, I have a high schooler and middle school and an elementary uh, younger one. Yeah, organization. How do I get my brain? Organization is key and it can be so difficult. I mean, I think I'm fairly organized, but being a mom, it's a, a totally different level of organization. Uh, I'm a huge fan of color coding. Mm. Uh, so, you know, maybe your, um, your youngest, you have a schedule that you can, people make them in Excel. I kind of just handwrite mine. Um, maybe your youngest, his is in red, or you know your oldest is different color. Um, I like to have a hub in the home by the front door. If there's any way you can have like a um, magnetic board or a bulletin board or something kind of by the front door or the garage door, wherever people mm -hmm. tend to go okay. in and out of the most and have schedules up, checklists. Um, if your kids tend to forget things walking out the door, by the door is a great place for a checklist. So mm -hmm. what they need going to school every day, um, what they need for soccer practice, things like that. Uh, you know, so just the organization, I think, is key, and um, and actually uh, timers as well. So I don't know if you're the one that, that kind of ushers them in after school when they come home and kind of gets them started on homework, but the older kids don't, they tend to be a little bit better at managing time, but the younger kids really need our guidance, and I actually have two timers. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. Yeah. So you know. my absolute favorite in the world is this, it's called a uh, time timer, and it's timetimer.com okay. and um, this sure, I love camera. because it is visual so wow. I have a four and a half year old and so when I tell him he has five minutes or ten minutes for whatever you know that's such a um, obscure it's a yeah, weird it's concept not, yeah. yeah it's not you very have to see it. yeah you need something concrete and so we set this for ten minutes um, this is like the newest model oh, timetable. Oh, it's visual, so you it can is. really see the amount of time. Yeah, and it will shrink. I mean, it's in slow motion, but you know, he'll be doing whatever, eating his breakfast, and he'll look up and, you know, it's down to five minutes. Now, um, this latest model has a little sound. I have, it, I have mine turned off, but um, it's not very loud, I think. So I love to pair the time timer with Oh, the, the Pomodoro, the little tomato the timer. audio timer. You can use an egg timer. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you have these in your house. Uh, you can use any kind of timer, um, but kids really like this tomato. You know, it just makes it a little bit more fun and, and a little bit more creative and colorful. 
So pairing these Is your two house together. this organized, Anthony? <laughs> it's pretty organized, but I'm looking at that timer. I need that for a culinary fight club. Yes. Oh. When, when the chefs oh, are yeah. cooking and they got 60 minutes, I like that big one. Because yeah. yeah. the, the red kind of shows it. So, so it's good for adults, yes. too. Yes. <laughs> That's Very great. Cool. Yeah. That's great. So kids can physically see that time exactly. ticking exactly. down. Yep. So stay, staging things by the door, having the checklist, having the timers. What are some other tips? Because I know homework was always a big issue for us. And I know that you've got some great ideas about even setting up homework stations or... I th and I think a big question is how much you should help with homework. Oh. And I heard throughout the school years, really don't help. <laughs> Is that the case? So yeah, let me address that one first and I'll get back to the homework, the actual logistics of the space. Um, so it really depends and I would talk to your child's teacher at the beginning of mm -hmm. the year and ask. Um, some teachers are much more strict than others. For the most part, teachers want kids doing homework independently so that that teacher can kind of gauge how much the child is understanding. Mm -hmm. However, if your child is, if it's 6 p.m. and he's panicking and frustrated and he's just, you know, not getting it and he starts to really worry, oh, well, if I don't get it done, I have to stay in the yeah. recess or whatever, jump in, help him out. You know, it's better to, um, you know, I, I don't want to say displease the teacher, but it's better to do that than let your child kind of get into the mm -hmm. spiral of anxiety around schoolwork. And then I would email the teacher the next morning. Like, yeah. Hey, as a heads up, I had to give him a lot of help. He might be unclear, you know, mm -hmm. on this concept. Let's, you know, maybe yeah. you could use a little refresher or, or a little extra help. Um, but I would, I would, if forced in the moment, I would jump in and help and then communicate. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it okay to like help them correct their homework before they hand it in or to hand it in wrong? So that's Good a question. Test. Yeah, again, circle back and ask the teacher okay. um, because they might want to see what the child is actually doing on mm -hmm. his own or on her own. Um, and also that can really cause a lot of fights with the parent and the child. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know. Th sometimes the child feels kind of nitpicked or criticized, and like, you know, mom, yeah. quit hovering over my shoulder. I've got it. So it depends on the child, depends on the teacher. But okay. I would, mm -hmm. uh, I would kind of consult with both and and see what comes from there. That's a good um, tip because I normally just hover and jump. No, that's wrong. <laughs> yeah. no, I can no, no, do this over again. Yeah. And, and how I does that go? The mom that gave the wrong answers. So mom, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was very hands off, and I have to. Tell you, I just dropped off my daughter at Ohio State at college, and I could tell the parents who hovered, mm -hmm. who were still at college, so <laughs> trying to help out with the scheduling. Yeah. And you, I mean, I think those kids got to rely on oh, for sure. that help. Yeah, my college, one of my college roommates, um, her mom would call her in the morning and service her alarm clock. What? Yes, it was work. Oh, that's a little. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And this is like when we were seniors in college, so they've been going on the whole time. Wow. Yeah. Oh my. I have to go back in the homework, right? And at home, I keep going back and forth about homework. When they get home, I give them their snack. Do I get them to do their homework right away, or do I give them a chance to kind of watch TV first a little bit and relax or whatever, and do, or do their Damn homework? Time. That, yeah. I'm going back and forth, and I don't know which one works better. You know, it varies a little bit by age, but 15 minutes of kind of settling in time is, is a good place to start. And, you know, you can get them settled in and get their snack <laughs> and then set the timers. <laughs> and, that, you know, and it does take a little coaching up front. You know, okay, guys, here's your snack. Now that you're set, I'm going to set the timer, you know, when, when you see, when you hear it go off or see it. And then, you know, you guys need to clean up your snack and, and head on over and do homework. You might have need to stay close to prompt, you know, the first mm. few times. So hopefully they kind of get into that rhythm on their own. What, what are we going to find in the book? Can you, we talk about learning the code in? Um, Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> we have to let you go because I know we want to give away some copies. So what is really in the book? So I wrote this book for parents because I find that a lot of parents, you know, have uh, very bright, wonderful, capable kids that enter, you know, first or second grade and they hit these roadblocks with reading or with math mm -hmm. or organization and parents are just kind of, uh, um, so unsure of what's going on and what to do and often to, and not that schools are, are bad places or teachers are bad people but the wheels turn slowly and so getting extra help for your child can really be a slow process and oftentimes as a parent you're getting conflicting information True. and it's very confusing so i wrote this for parents to kind of go through and it's a great way for parents to take an inventory of what is their child you know what are they just knocking it out of the park and they just got certain skills intact and what are the things that are that are really kind of um, roadblocks for them mm -hmm. at this point and then what to do going forward. 
Well, thank you so much. This segment went way too fast. <laughs> I know. We're going to have to have you back. I see lots of props over there, and I'm very prop oriented. <laughs> I saw you with big notes and everything. There's colors, yeah. yeah. The, the colors, but really great tips. We have these thank books you. to give away. Okay, how many are we giving away? As have you, we have three right here. Yeah, right hashtag three. Alive. Alive. Yeah. Chicago Needs the Live. I mean, we have three to give away. So, learning decoded. Okay. The show, we'll call out the winners. Yes. Thank, Thank you so you much. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you so really much. It. Lots of helpful hints yes. there. Yes, and I mean, lots more. Um, also, they can go to your website and follow absolutely. you on yeah, Twitter. Yeah, learndecoded.tv. I have a blog, just sort of a video blog, where I have excellent. weekly tips for parents that are education related. Thank you yep. so much. Thank you.